working on for something. Oh, hi, everyone. It's nice to see you. It's wonderful to be able to speak after all that. <laughs> imagine my joy. <laughs> Please imagine it because I can't. <laughs> Quite something we've been out here and seeing all, all these magnificent folks here from St. James Lutheran Church, all these children of God. Have you noticed a little difference in tone between Lois and myself? <laughs> I think of uh, when I was laid on the couch and thinking about this. I thought about the Advent budget. Where, where, is, where is that, by the way? Oh, could you bring it down? He wants to say something. I, uh, I think back of my 20 or so years here, and I have to tell you that in many ways I still consider this my home, and that St. James was one of the most wonderful experiences of my ministerial life. St. Nicholas, Santa Lucia, Stations of the Cross. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, the Advent Buzzard. <laughs> no, no, please don't get up. Please don't get up. So what, what, what did you want to say to these people? So he wants you to know that he never understood why he got hung up <laughs> every advent and why you would beat him. But he forgives you. <laughs> Stations of the cross, burning of the advent wreaths, people of the church, Epiphany, do you remember our wonderful Epiphany services? I don't know if you still do it the same, you know, where we put many candles on the altar. We'd all would continue to wear our coats because we would go outside afterwards. Do you remember that procession? Let me tell you a story you don't know about. So Harry Thurwanger and I were here at the same time for a while. Harry used to come being single. He used to come to Linda's in my house about every other Friday for dinner, and we would uh, watch Young Frankenstein, <laughs> one, of, one of the classic movies, uh, better than the Maltese Falcon. Sorry about that. Um, and we knew every word to, uh, to Young Frankenstein. So on this particular epiphany, um, Pastor Hansen had come out, took his, his place in the middle of, by the, uh, by the pulpit, and we extinguished the candles, if you remember, getting ready to go outside. So Harry Thurwanger and I walked out together, and we started to put out one of like 30 candles. And having watched Young Frankenstein so many times, you probably, don't know that sometimes clergy can actually have fun. And I looked over to Harry and said, psst, psst, while we're putting the candles out. Harry, Harry, I want you to listen to me carefully and do exactly what I tell you. Put the candle back. <laughs> With that, Harry started laughing so hard that he had to leave the sanctuary and the service began 10 minutes later. For every time he tried to come out of the sacristy, he started to laugh again. Our plays, our lantern parades, our fellowship, the puts, 
or Passover seders or last supper, the people. Someone stuck in the elevator, the cross being hit by lightning. Now, I just will hasten to point out that that happened about three weeks after I left the church. <laughs> Thought I would mention that to you. <laughs> Box City, the Moravian Star, members of our congregation visiting Katrina, the talent shows, the sound of music, the Lily Cross, the lantern parades, the singing at the nursing home, carols. The setting balloons aloft on Ascension. Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah. Do you remember killing 300 birds and <laughs> six whales that way? Yes, we were very ecologically. Well, that's another story. The seniors program, the people, the services in German and English, the preschool, VBS, soups at the craft fair, services on Sunday, nursing home ministry, having services there, the joy, the weddings, the weddings, the weddings, <laughs> the weddings. And did I mention the weddings? <laughs> Elka and LCMS. Bishop Lazarus coming here one day, not knowing that we had dual membership, <laughs> looking at the Missouri Synod red hymnal and the green hymnal, watching him go like this, <laughs> and then hearing him say, Oh, this will never do. <laughs> well, we outlived him. <laughs> the Walther League, the people, the Easter Vigil, the light of Christ, the light of Christ, the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. The pastors, the organists, Decking the church, de-decking the church, Mardi Gras, friends we gained, friends we lost, confirmation, banners and pyramids, the Jesse tree, joys and sorrows and elation, mourning, ashes on our forehead, Pentecost, Everyone wearing red, better red. Sunday school, the people. Our past, our present. Still, I still say our, isn't that interesting? Yeah. Our past, our present, our future. Our animals in the sanctuary. And I don't mean the parishioners. <laughs> COVID. Streaming, youth group. Listen to the words of one of our former pastors. For all these things we remember, for all these things we celebrate, for all his countless mercies and goodness, all praise be to him forever. May he always lead us in carrying on his work until our work is finished here below and others take up where we leave off, 1931. 100 years. To us, a long period of time to God, well, it's just a piece of the fabric of the face of his church. What has St. James Church meant? I'm going to embarrass someone now. 
What this church has meant is ministry. What this church has meant is God's love. God's presence. Inviting people into a church that no other churches in the area would have. From different denominations. For there is one Lord and one faith and one baptism and one God and Father of us all. And we have Christians, brothers and sisters from all over. Amen, Bishop? Amen. Amen. St. James is a church of ministry. A couple of years ago when I was at a hospital still working, I now moved on to work just basically with law enforcement. I was at Southside Hospital. It doesn't matter, my image doesn't show up. Okay. <laughs> I can follow you. I mean, you can try, but... <laughs> there was a young man in our emergency, uh, in our intensive care unit, who was in an automobile accident. And he was quite ill. Terrible injuries. And in his room was a leather jacket and a picture of meatloaf. I called a member of this church. His whole life was built around this particular music group. And he was dying. His family's hearts were broken and they can see almost no hope in the death of their child. And then I called a member of this congregation who is just a symbol of all of you in this congregation. And I said, we have a young man here who's dying. Do you think you could come and visit him? so he and his family could meet a member of the group we love. And not only did he come immediately, but he brought him drumsticks. My friend John. This is what St. James is about. It's about being the hand of God extended in a world that needs to know the love and grace and peace and forgiveness of one that we follow, and that is Jesus Christ our Lord. I thank you for inviting me here this night to be part of of this group, for I am truly honored to be asked to speak to you this evening. Worship, fellowship, hearing God's word, caring for one another, caring for people outside these walls, it has meant adoring Jesus and Jesus adoring you. You have had a glorious past, truthfully at times quite wonderful, other times not so wonderful. But through it all, God's presence has been manifest in this place, bringing light to a world that can seem so dark, bringing grace to those who know not of grace, bringing companionship to those so in need of companionships. This is who St. James is. And oh yes, this is who St. James will be in the future. You are his hands. 
remember always that he will never leave you and he will never, never forsake you. Amen. Amen.